No Premier League action today, but today we can book our place in the Champions League semi-final and the FA Cup final. Well, I suppose equally we can get knocked out of both and only have six games left the whole season. No good being negative though, it's the first video on Football Manager in 2020 and finally FM20 makes sense. Hello the folks and welcome to part 13 of season 2 of our Liverpool save on Football Manager 2020 for the first time in 2020, woo! But anyway, today we take on Bayern Munich in the second leg of the UEFA Champions League quarterfinal. Back at, at Anfield in front of the Cop Faithful. And then we go to Wembley to face Newcastle United in the semi-final of the FA Cup. To book our place at Wembley once again in our first FA Cup final of this career mode. But let's have a look how we've got on, shall we, in the last few weeks since we have had a video. Of course, it technically has been a few weeks to the video last night. I can only apologise for that. I've had a little bit of a break over the Christmas period. So let's just familiarise ourselves what's gone on uh, in the last few videos. Now, uh, last time out, we did unfortunately lose to Man City, uh, which meant that Man City did potentially take the reins to the title. But we'll find out how that's changed or potentially not in a little minute. And then, of course, we did beat Porto by two goals to nil to put ourselves in the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Uh, so the first video, that, the, sorry, the first game that was not televised as such on the channel, we went and beat Tottenham by two goals to one. A double from Mario Balotelli. Yes, the one was cancelled out by Harry Kane, but a double from Mario, ba Mario Balotelli against managerless Tottenham. Of course, sacked uh, was Jurgen Klopp a few weeks ago. And uh, Fatih Terim has uh, took the reins, a uh, former Galatasaray manager. Bloody hell, he's managed Galatasaray four, four times. Wow, he's managed Turkey three times as well. He's, he's He likes to go back to clubs. Bloody hell. Anyway, let's hope he's not like that with Tottenham. Goodness me. And then we went away to Burnley and produced exactly the same result. But it wasn't cut and dry, really. Uh, Mo Salah missed a penalty, but Mane did get the... Um, what's the bloody word? I can't think now. What's the... No, not the reaction. The rebound. I could just completely lost it there. But so that, that's the proper screen. That's what I want to see. Uh, and Firmino won the game for us, really, in the 54th minute. Jack Cork did get one back to me. It wasn't a clean sheet for us. But oh, hum. We, we got the three points. That's what's important at this time in the league. Now, we had a frustrating quarter-final first leg, it has to be said, uh, at Bayern Stadium, because Laporte took an early lead for us. We were pretty much controlling the whole game, uh, played very well. Of course, a 1-0 win away from home would have been great. Uh, and as you see, I mean, Bayern did control the game, really, with 62% of possession, but our defence was solid until the 92nd minute. We took a corner, Balotelli headed straight to the keeper. They got it out quickly. And, well, the result is... Uh, all to be seen there. It's a little bit of a setback. It's nothing bad because as long as we um, draw at home, I mean, if they pick up a if they pick up a point, uh, not a point, a goal, then it can change things. But at least we got the upper hand at least. But it doesn't really help that they did score a goal. But the more damaging result is the fact that Leeds drew with us one each. And I hold my hands up to admittedly putting a weakened side out against Leeds because Leeds are a team that. Before this, had scored nine points all season. Um, they're already relegated, were relegated with six games to go. So I was honestly just complacent, and that complacency, well, just didn't work out. And we could only muster a draw with Leeds, and uh, that was our first draw in the Premier League ever since that draw against Crystal Palace back in February. We had a very good run ever since then, although actually we've only played one, two, three, four, five Premier League games. Or is that six? One, two, three. Goodness me, that was only our sixth Premier League game after that. It's because there's been so many different things that uh, the Premier League is moving very slowly. But we're not focused on the Premier League today, although I will show you how the Premier League looks. Man City are still in control of this title race. So I got excited against Leeds, very excited, because Sli uh, City did slip up as well. Um, I think that had a perfect record until they drew with Leicester. Uh, they drew with Leicester, not really a surprising result, has to be said. Harvey Barnes getting the goal before Aguero actually snuck the point for, uh, for the Blues, but... They've done all right in the Premier League. The same day we uh, drew with Leeds, they beat Burnley by four goals now, which was definitely a sucker punch. But they are, uh, looks like, still in the Champions League. So Barcelona and Man City, the two teams confirmed already to go to the next stage. It's going to be either us or Bayern um, and AC Milan or Atletico Madrid. So let's find out what the team is going to be then for today's match. Unfortunately, a few injuries. Uh, Oxide Chamberlain and John Matip are two players that are out. But apart from that, we have the normal squad. So in today's squad, we've got Allison in the sticks with the normal defence. Uh, of course, Matip's out that defence, so Laporte is in for the moment. Now we've got Fabinho, Henderson and Keita in the midfield. Keita's been doing really well at the moment. And seeing as Oxide chamberlains injured, really his second option uh, in that midfield for, in that midfield too. 
Obviously, Milner, Henderson, uh, Berge and Keita are the four that make that up if Oxide chamberlain did you. But Keita gets the nod today with the usual front three, Mo Salah, Sadio Mane and Bobby Firmino. And if you are excited to see the return of Football Manager 2020 on the channel, finally in 2020... I actually leave a like on this video. I'd love, to love 10 likes on the return, uh, the first video, 2020. That really helps the channel out. Uh, I always say this. It, sometimes people don't understand just how much it does help the channel out. It really does immensely help the channel out. And every like uh, goes a long way. But they're playing a similar formation to us. Uh, Serge Gnabry in the last match was a definite threat. Lewandowski is always a threat. Um, and a very solid squad. But that being said, um, we have the home crowd. And hopefully we can go and beat uh, Bayern Munich. Of course, it was, it was a bit of a weird one, wasn't it, last year? Because I think from memory, we did something very similar uh, against both Bayern Munich. And I think it was, was it Real Madrid? Uh, it, it was one of the Spanish teams, either Real Madrid uh, or Barcelona. We had a very weird two games where we sort of won one, I think, away from home. Uh, and then it was a goalless draw at Anfield it, on both occasions. Um, and we qualified that way. But potentially, it might not be the same today, particularly after that little bit of a howler by Alisson. Luckily, there wasn't... Uh, a player closer on Alaba, I mean, again, goodness me, Bayern Munich within 12 minutes, within 10 seconds, arguably, there, I mean, what, what's happened there, goodness knows, within 12 seconds, never mind 12 minutes, uh, they have, uh, yeah, they potentially nearly got two goals in one move, which is really uh, awkward for us, but all we need to do is do exactly what we did last year, and that's to hold a uh, a nil-nil draw, but that's never good for the ticker, that's never good for the heart rate, I'd much rather go and win this in style, Get a goal or two, and that just takes the pressure off just a little bit. But uh, against a team like Bayern Munich, you can't you can't say that. You can't just say, oh, it's fine, we'll get a few goals. Good boy, I think I've some Komen to have Lewandowski, but Van Dijk does what he does. Beautiful, and in fact, gets it right up the other end of the pitch. Very impressive. Doesn't lead to anything for us, but definitely snuffs out the danger. Although it seems Bayern might be coming back for more. And uh, we can't, can't see that, but this looks like a bit of an end-to-end -end affair. Similar to how it was uh, in Germany, it seems that Bayern are really dominating possession. But once again, like in Germany, our defence, at least for the moment, remains robust. But a good ball to Gnabry on the wing. Alexander Arnold gets that out beautifully. Really good tackle on his feet. Yeah, I could have done with him passing to Salah a little bit earlier there. But Salah gets away from the defender. Runs through to Neuer Mane. Yes, Mane gets the goal. We all know one-on-ones don't go in on Football Manager 2020. That's something that, however many updates they do, won't matter. But after I like a swig of me water... Uh, it's not Mo Salah who gets the goal, it is Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane is there after Mo Salah misses the one-on-one, -on -one and uh, he nets it. Manuel Neuer should have really picked that up, you could argue, and he was, he was close on the second attempt, to be honest. But we take a 1-0 lead, which, you know, looking at possession, you wouldn't have said we would have done at all. But Bayern Munich, I thought they potentially could have cancelled that out very quickly, and of course they do cancel it out, then it's all level pegging in terms of away goals, etc. But at the moment, we do go through to the semi-final, and our fourth? Fourth, fourth, third, third consecutive semi-final, fourth consecutive. Se oh, I don't know. It's really confusing me. For fourth, fourth consecutive semi-final. Of course, that's right. Yeah, we won it in real life. We didn't. We we lost it against Real Madrid. Then we won it in game. So yeah, our fourth consecutive semi-final. Um, but at the moment, it looks like Milan going out, out of those two. Which uh, sorry, going through out of those two, which is a little bit of a shock. It has to be said, but not all over yet. Um, as much as it isn't all over, of course, here. So I'm going to tell the players just to calm down, just to concentrate and make sure we can get through to the last four because two goals in a few minutes for Bayern Munich and the situation changes altogether. Let's hope that's not what happens and starts happening here. But a good tackle from Robertson. Puts it back to Kimmich though. Lewandowski, the real danger. Gundogan with the shot and just off the frame of the net. And Alaba back in again to Komen, but nothing doing at the moment. I mean, you have to say that it's been a little bit of poor finishing from Bayern Munich. I mean, out of the eight shots we've had, six of them have been on target. That's a good 75%. Uh, but only 40% of those have been on target. For me, that was through, though, and uh, a little bit of a an interesting one, the, the goal there. Apparently, it was a clean tackle from Bayern, but it could have very easily been a penalty if something dramatic had happened and there was any foul play, which obviously would have helped us out a ton, but I suppose we had to go and finish the penalty off. Ball from Mane to Salah. Uh, sorry, the other way around. Uh, Salah into Mane. Fabini on the edge of the box. Can we do anything with this corner? David Alaba trying to get it. Fabini holds it up into Mane! Sadio Mane! What a finish from Mane! I always say in real life he's our main player. And the caption at the bottom of the screen could not be more correct. Bloody hell, that was amazing. Look at this. I mean, Fabinho's hold-up play here. Two against one was, was impeccable. But Mane's finish on the volley. Pfft. Neuer just went. 
All right, mate, you can have that one. Goodness me, we are 35 minutes away from going through to the Champions League semi-final with relative ease against Bayern Munich in this match. A really good performance so far. They've got to now go and score two goals. Uh, and if they score two goals, they are through. I mean, it's not something that seems impossible or too ridiculous. It definitely can happen, but we are obviously definitely the team that uh, are going to be favoured to go through. Now, Alexander Arnold with a good block there, but uh, Bayern Munich still applying the pressure. would be very surprised if they come out of this game not scoring a single goal. So uh, it's going to go to squeaky bum time, I would say, here at one point. But a very good pass from Firmino through to Salah. Salah's going to struggle with the defensive line there. Salah runs through, shoots, and that's a poor shot, really. Should have been a little bit less greedy and held the ball up. But at least he had, the, he had a go. You know, Neuer could have been half asleep. These things happen, don't they? But... Uh, I know Fabinho is playing well, but seeing as he's tired, I'm going to bring James Milner on and swap Milner and Henderson round. Henderson's a very good defensive midfielder. Pardon me. Uh, now, I would bring Van Dijk off, but I just can't trust Gomez in this situation. As much as I love Joe Gomez, I just can't trust him in this situation because it, it could be a serious like career damager, couldn't it, really? If he goes and makes a mistake and Bayern Munich go through, it's, it's going to be what his career is based on. I mean, look at Loris Carriers, for goodness sake. So... That's all I'm going to say in terms of an example. We're going to bring Firmino off. He's not really done too much today, it has to be said. Um, and we're going to bring Mario Balotelli on for the last 10 minutes. And we are going to make a defensive change shortly. But perhaps we might not need one. We've got a few minutes to go. We're going to get counter-attacking. Tell the lads just to demand a little bit more from them. Just make sure that, you know, they don't think the pressure's completely off. But with a few minutes to go, it is pretty much all over. And Laporte could have just finished it off there with a second goal in two games, but unfortunately just clipped the bar. But with a few minutes to go, it looks like we are going to get through to the Champions League semi-final. We do, we're through to the Champions League semi-final. I mean, no complaints there. I really did think that uh, Bayern Munich could give us a bit of a, bit of a, a bigger uh, opposition, a bigger challenge. But we played in Peckley today, the defence was very good. Uh, Alexander Arnold and Van Dijk seemingly playing particularly well. And with two goals, it's no surprise that Sadio Mane does get player of the match. And we are through to the last four of the Champions League. Let's have a quick look. Um, who joins? Is it Milan or Atletico? It is Atletico Madrid. So uh, in the next few days, well, it's already been drawn the semi-final. Of course it has. And we are playing against Barcelona to book a place in the final of the Champions League. That is very, very exciting. And potentially it could be an all-English final with Man City and ourselves joining each other. That would be a very interesting final. We've got to get there, you know, got to get there though, yet. Um, played Juventus last year. Can we get into our fourth consecutive Champions League final? Not, not, let's not worry about that just yet. FA Cup time. Now, before I start a segment in every episode, I always think, right, what can I talk about pre-match? And there's about three or four things to talk about here, so we'll try and get through them as quick as we can. Firstly, the very sad news, and I hope Mo Salah didn't get injured on purpose because we ridd ridiculed him in the last game. Anyway, he's going to be out for three weeks, is Mo Salah, one of our most important players of an average rating of 7.34 this year, 19 goals so far. He's going to be out of at least the Champions League semi-final, and if he's out for three weeks, that kind of rules him out, let's think, 24, first. He's really going to be out until the Tottenham game at earliest, isn't he? So, Man United and Wolves are really where we're looking at, and actually I hadn't realised that because of our semi-final against Barcelona, we were actually meant to play the Manchester United match today. But that's been pulled back so much now that we're actually playing that as the penultimate game of the season. That could be a massive game, but uh, more on that. Again, we've got too much to talk about already. Um, we are through to the Champions League semi-final. Next, we're going to talk about Newcastle, because Newcastle are a championship team uh, who have done very well, to be fair to them, to get to, this, uh, get to this point of the FA Cup. But to be fair, looking in retrospect, I didn't look at their FA Cup run. It does look like, to be fair that they've had quite an easy run to get here. Not to ridicule them in any such way, but Portsmouth, Brentford, Middlesbrough and Birmingham, although, to be fair, they've beaten all those quite convincingly. All home ties as well, interesting. Uh, but, uh, you know, they've beaten them all consi uh, considerably and, and fairly, but, you know, not the biggest challenge. And when you get to the semi-final of a competition, then you, you really are challenged. But we won't be complacent against Newcastle. Still got Steve Bruce in charge. It looks like from the main players, it's pretty much the same squad as the one that got you relegated last year. Danny Rose there, that's an interesting addition to the squad. Um, Masonda, was he there before? I don't recognise Masonda, being at, uh, again, another, another Vitesse loan here. Eh? Uh, Andy Carroll's still there, but he's on the transfer list. Transfer listed, poor man, for £13,500. How old is he now? 32. I'll tell you what, as uh, a championship manager, I'd snap him up personally. That would be... Uh, 
a great little sign. You know how, how I like my older signings and more experienced players. Uh, but let's have a quick look as well at how we've got to the FA Cup final before the start we start the match, shall we? Um, the FA Cup semi-final, sorry. We did get to this point last year, but uh, we were beaten by them little sods. And actually, a very good point to make is that I've just realised it clicked with the Champions League. We played Man City in the final of the EFL Cup. I don't think we played them in. A, I don't think we played the Community Shield this year, did we? Now they played against Arsenal. Um, we could play them in the Champions League final, and we could also play them in the FA Cup final. Yeah, that would be pretty much English domination of world football. That's frightening. And, and I know, obviously, you, you, of course, you're going to play an English team in the EFL Cup and AF, F, AF Cup. Fair enough. A, FA Cup final, but. Uh, for that to be the same in three consecutive matches would just be absolutely frightening. But uh, look at that for uh, Man City. Man United. Man United. I'm not a Man United fan, but, I mean, not so much today's match. But on Wednesday, if you'd give them a kick in, that would be all right. Um, yeah, anyway, should we get into this match after all that rambling? We're going to play have to play without Mo Salah. Of course, Adrian goes into the sticks for today's game because he always plays in the cup competitions. And to be fair to him, always puts in a good shift for us. That's why he has signed a new year, one-year contract. He's a backup player and 55 grand a week. I'm not going to begrudge him sitting on the bench. And he is a very good backup player, so that's why he signed a new one-year contract. The normal back line, again, because it's the semi-final of the FA Cup, we're not going to mistreat this. We're going to play, um, really, our most solid squad. We've got a rotating midfield, though. Sander Berge in the midfield with James Milner and Pedro Chirivella uh, making a regular start. He has played, I think, a few times in the Cup so far this year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, he's played three matches in the FA Cup. 7.1 average rating. Only actually played one match in the Carabao Cup, getting a 7.5. Um, but he's a player that's very much on the verge of becoming a very good squad player. So, uh, he's playing well in the FA Cup, and today we're going to give him another opportunity. Of course, we've got Shakiri on the right wing, replacing Mo Salah. Mane at left wing, and Balotelli making an appearance um, up front. You might ask, well, what's happened to Milik? I mean, you might even forget we signed uh, Milik, because he was a pretty big sign in January, but he's just not fitting at all. But... I don't think he deserves a spot if you've got Balotelli banging in the goals and Firmino banging in the goals and, and Mane and Salah banging in the goals. It's very tricky. It's like a Origi. In most great Premier League sides, both of those players would be the first name on the team sheet. But because we've got so many good goal scorers, you can't take them out of the team just to put Milik in to keep him happy. So I think it's a good sign. He's got years on his side. Um, but at the moment, these few months, I think it might be a bit of a struggle um, to fit pretty much the team. S certainly... Um, for this title run of the next few games. But anyway, um, Newcastle are playing a 4-1-4-1. Clearly five men behind the ball. But some creative midfielders, Shelby and Longstaff. Interesting, they've got Reese Nelson. Um, is that a permanent deal? No, it's just a loan deal from Arsenal. Um, but again, a very good youngster. Almiron, playing well in the Premier League. And uh, Morega there, top goal scorer. 22 goals in the Championship this year. And that is nothing to be sniffed at. But we are going to tell the lads we expect to come back as finalists. We're going to try not to be complacent uh, like we were against Leeds, which are arguably a club that are poorer than Newcastle. Newcastle on a higher club that are probably coming back to the Premier League, it would look like, as well as Aston Villa. Um, so we have to respect Newcastle, but hopefully we do come away from Wembley today um, as FA Cup finalists. It's a corner, though, in from Alexander-Arnold. Balotelli can't quite get to it, but Milner potentially makes a second chance. So Alexander-Arnold, the playmaker again, though, here. Is he going to put it in? Into Sander Bursch! What a finish from the defensive midfielder. I mean, that'll end up on end-of-season highlight reel. So let's see the highlight reel, shall we? Just for the first time, Alexander-Arnold put the corner in. Um, but he was the one who made the assist anyway, even though it was a little bit later than planned. But Alexander-Arnold, I think that was John Joe Shelby there. Very nice ball. Simple ball back to Bursch. And that is a beautiful shot straight through the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper, again, a little bit like Neuer going, I ain't getting to that, son. That Freddie Woodman in the goal, and uh, they're already overwhelmed by the feedback. So we're going to tell the lads just to demand more out of them. While they're a bit nervous, pounce. That's what I think we ought to do um, and go attacking me. I won the up against Newcastle here half an hour in, and uh, I'm happy to see that. But as I've said, we're a championship side. It is the better draw to have than playing against them. Oh, bloody hell, Sander Burge nearly makes it two from two. It's the better side to play, isn't it, right? You know, I'd, I'd much rather draw Newcastle than Man City or Man United, admittedly. But it does come in the complacency argument. But can we make it two from two corners? Or do Newcastle have something to say? It's one on one here because of the men we've piled forward for that corner. Almiron's got past Andy Robertson and he got past the keeper as well. And that is pretty, pretty poor, it has to be said. 
And uh, that is a little bit concerning from our lads. That I mean, okay, it was from a corner, but we had the same against Bayern Munich off camera. There were too many players up the pitch. We'd only got Andy Robertson back, and that's something I've probably got to look at on set pieces because that's two goals now conceded in the same manner. You can't expect Andy Robertson to do it all. A little bit poor from Adrian after we sung his praises earlier on. But uh, there's another twist to the tail. Is that is that Newcastle have got a goal back. And it looks like we should probably will go in at half-time level pegging. So we are going to tell the lads we won't be happy with that. Looks like the goal scorer, Almiron, has picked up an injury. But we're going to actually tell the lads that sounds a little bit better, even though they've not really had much of a reaction. I think if we get a goal, we're favourites to win. I think that's more of a, a subtle comment, even though the lads weren't too taken aback by it or too bothered by it. But still 40 minutes to go. Not massively scoring games today, but let's see if we can make it uh, two positive matches from two. If Newcastle got to the final, it'd be gutting for us, but it'd be brilliant from Newcastle. I mean, imagine if they went on to win the competition. That would be awesome from their standpoint. It's a neutral anyway. But because they're playing us, I'd, I'd, I'd rather them go out, please. I mean, it's been a great run to here, but I'd rather it not go on any longer. Anyway, 26 minutes in, and the deadlock to go ahead hasn't been broken again. It's uh, still one each. And with every passing minute, you do worry that Newcastle will be the team that potentially take this. But Pellegrini, not Manuel. I know he's just out of a job at West Ham, but nonetheless. Uh, he is on the wing, but uh, dispossessed by one of our lads. And Shakiri, a good ball up to Balotelli. But Balotelli is going to struggle at that to get it to anyone. But still gets it to Mane. Very overcrowded midfield this is now. Lovely ball from Shirovella to James Milner. Can he do anything for it? A bit of an awkward angle. That's why Milner's dispossessed. Nelson... Gets to it, but Marnay dispossesses. Can Marnay do anything with this? Back to Shirovella on the edge of the box. He shoots, and it's just wide. Good shot from Shirovella there. A player who's done a little bit today, an average rating of 6.9. No better or worse than anybody else, so we can't single him out. Marnay does look a little bit tired, so we're going to bring uh, Origi on for Sadio Marnay. Could have been Lainez, I suppose, but Origi has that got that versatility, so that's what's the appealing thing more than anything. And we're going to tell the lads to push forward, though, now. 15 minutes to go. I would like to get this done before full time, but equally I don't want to push forward that much that Newcastle take the initiative and actually go and win the game. With eight minutes to go though, Alan St. Maximin puts the corner in, Sander Burge gets it out for now, Shelby with the shot, get it out, thank God for that, Alexander Arnold got himself in front of the shot, because I think if Newcastle made it 2-1 we would really, really start to panic. Um, one more change for normal time, because of course it could be extra time. Um, we are going to bring Shirovella off I think for Naby Keita. Naby Keita's played well when he's been called upon recently. And Shirovella's played well, but again, Naby Keita or Henderson, I'd rather go for the more attacking option here. We've got Milner and Burge um, as the defensive options, but unfortunately, we couldn't do what uh, what we wanted at half-time. We couldn't get another goal, but there's still another half an hour. We've got another half an hour now to do this. Not the best situation, because again, with the league run and the Champions League run, another half an hour of football isn't going to help anybody. But it looks like the first 15 minutes of football have not materialised anything again. So this is a very bizarre situation. Um, and I think he's not had a great game. And he's knackered. And I wouldn't usually bring Virgil van Dijk off. But on this situation, I know I said I couldn't just trust Joe Gomez. blah de blah de blah But I think in this situation, I can. Because we don't want to risk the injury of uh, Virgil van Dijk. Anyway, let's see if we can make it to penalties and uh, and score and not have to take any single penalty. Although if they give us a penalty and we score a penalty, fair enough. But I just don't want to get to the official penalties. A poor pass though from Christian Atsu, I think that was in fact a worse pass there from uh, Naby Keita completely off the target of Divock Origi. Atsu is making up for it, it seems. With a ball into the middle. Joe Linton gets it but passes it only to Milner. Great ball from Robertson to Balotelli. Can Balotelli make it 2-1? On? 1-1 on one with the keeper. He shoots and he does. Balotelli finally breaks the deadlock after 40 minutes. And it's took nearly 70 minutes to break that deadlock once again. And uh, we are on top now. Balotelli with his 14th goal of the season for a free signing. I don't think he's done too bad at all. Very pleased that Balotelli has uh, done well here. But he only had the goalkeeper to beat. No one scores one-on-ones in FM apparently. But uh, there's been two of them scored today. I mean, it'd be nice if Newcastle didn't score another one. But we'll have to see how we get on, I suppose. But just over 10 minutes of normal time to go. Can Newcastle bounce back? It's been fa fairly plain sailing for them throughout this competition in their games. Same for us. So it's new territory for both teams. John Joe Shelby, of course, former Liverpool Academy player. Back to Berger. I can assure you Berger's not a, uh, a former Academy player. Might have been served at local CAF, but uh, I mean, my jokes are terrible today. Anyway, I mean, Berger puts a good ball in for St. Maximum. Alexander Arnold, though, with a very nice block there. 
get that up, son. I'd love to just make it 3-1 and finish this all off. I, this isn't good for the ticker. Milner. Milner on the ball. Solid stuff from Milner. And a lovely ball. Swooping ball from Cates to Balotelli. I don't think he'll make it there. But Lascelles, a terrible pass from Jamal says I don't know why I've got my head in my hands. Or my hands in my head, I suppose. It, head in your hands is more like that. Anyway, we make it 3-1. Let's celebrate. That's not been back on our chair and all gutted. I just think that I was a little bit... Gutted for Jamal Lascelles that he'd played such a poor pass. He attended to play a back pass for the keeper. Balotelli was too quick to pick up on that. And with a beautiful strike, I would say that Balotelli um, has finished it all off. We're going to demand more again from the players just to make sure that they don't lose their cool or their confidence. But it looks like with two goals in two minutes from Mario Balotelli, we are through to the FA Cup final. Absolutely fantastic. It wasn't plain sailing, but a mistake from... Uh, from Newcastle and a great goal from Mario Balotelli on both accounts has meant that we go to the set, uh, sorry, to the final of the FA Cup. So I suppose before we finish, it would be cruel, wouldn't it, um, not to find out who wins the match between Man City and Man United. Who's going to join us? Let's see. I think match of the day FA Cup edition would be pretty impressive after those two semi-finals, but it's Manchester United that join us for a North West derby in the FA Cup final. You love to see it. Man City ruled out just by a late Dominic such and such goal. No idea what his name is. But uh, two early goals cancelled each other out. Didn't get anything until extra time. Man United took the lead. Rodri got it back. But a late goal from Man United mean that it is a Liverpool-Manchester United final. Has that ever happened before? Let's have a look. Let's go down memory lane. Yes, it has. 96. I mean, it was Man United on the right right side of that one. Is, the, is there a final that makes us look good? Again, Man United beats in the final. Where are we? Come on, we've surely beat Man United once. No, that, that's terrible. Come on. I don't think... No, they, they wouldn't be back this far, surely. Got beat by Burnley as well. I mean, we've been in a lot of FA Cup finals that we've lost. That's uh, that, that's a little bit of a shame. But we have... I mean, we haven't won this competition for 15 years, so it'd be great to go and win the FA Cup. Really. That'd be absolutely fantastic. But, um, although for some reason it's not quite uh, picked it up there just yet, we will play Man United um, at the end of the season on the 22nd of May. In the FA Cup final, which makes things look a little bit like this uh, until the end of the season. So, inevitably, there's going to be quite a few episodes in quick succession here. Going to play the, pardon me, Fulham game off camera. Come back for the Merseyside derby, which could actually be first against second, even though Everton have played a ridiculous amount of games now. So, really, they'll end up in fourth, I would say, which is a good achievement for Everton. I mean, Tottenham have only stayed up this year because of the mediocre, I mean, appalling, appalling, not mediocre. A poorly performance of the bottom three teams. But, uh, yeah, Everton look like they're going to finish in fourth. Uh, we're going to do the Merseyside derby next time out and the first leg of the Champions League final. Then, of course, we'll continue with Barcelona and Tottenham. Uh, or maybe even Bournemouth and Barcelona. Well, not quite decided yet. And, obviously, the last day of the Premier League. So, pretty much every match, bar that Fulham match, until the end of the season, will be one that is televised on the channel. If you are looking forward to those games, leave a like down below. The next episode will be out over the weekend, either on Saturday or on Sunday, it's the first FM20 video of the year. So I hope you had a great new year, and hopefully 2020 is a great year uh, for all of us. But uh, until the next time, until a few days' time, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys later on. Goodbye for now.